So now that some time has passed, I think we could calmly start discussing the f***ing leaving WWE and Paul White signing with AEW in a move that I don't think anybody saw coming. And why would anybody expect a move like this to happen? Big Show has worked in WWE ever since 1999, as long as you don't count 2007. Not so fun fact, in his near year away from the WWE, Big Show wrestled Hulk Hogan of all people. And while footage of the match can be found online, I can't find the promo that preceded it. So take this with a grain of salt, but supposedly, Paul White said that Big Show was his slave name. Why? Anyway, ever since Big Show signed with WWE, Big Show hasn't worked for any non-WWE wrestling company full time. The year that he was away, Big Show could have went to TNA, and TNA in 2007 was filled with lots of WWE guys. Guys like Kurt Angle, Christian Cage, and others trying to re-energize their careers. And then there are some guys who said it was a nice little vacation. Hey look, it's Booker T! But regardless of the reason why they would join, TNA in 2007 was a very likely destination for a lot of former WWE talent. And especially in later years, but it felt like there was ever a year for Big Show to go to another wrestling company full time. 2007 would have been it because he had the option right there. TNA was a pretty viable option. But again, he never did, which makes the move to AEW more shocking because fans just assume that if Big Show hasn't left WWE for another company at this point, he likely never would. And there are other factors to look at as to why fans would think that Big Show would never leave, whether it be because, oh, Big Show has lots of friends in WWE or he's just loyal to the WWE brand. If those weren't the case, people just assumed that, you know what, WWE would never let the Big Show leave. They would do everything in their money. I meant, I meant power. Uh, they would do everything in their power to make sure he would never leave. And if you want evidence of that, look at The Undertaker. If rumors are to be believed, he recently signed a 15-year contract. Now, I doubt he's going to be wrestling for the entirety of those 15 years. Hopefully. But the idea behind it is to have him locked in WWE for life and preventing him from going anywhere else. Which one would assume they would try to do with someone like The Big Show because, no pun intended, but Big Show is a pretty big name. He's one of the few wrestlers in the modern day that has mainstream appeal that non-wrestling fans recognize. So when you look at the situation on paper, it just seems so unlikely for Big Show to make this jump from WWE to AEW. And I think it's fair to say that it's left the wrestling community shocked and surprised. Especially the diehard WWE fans who, for what it's worth, I think they're taking it better than what most people expected. Okay, so some of those are a bit too harsh, but in all honesty, I think they're just knee-jerk reactions, and it's kind of immature. Like, you would never get something like that from me. I'm a professional, and I know what I'm doing. What the fuck? These social media posts are indicative of what I'm trying to say, though. That the big show leaving WWE and Paul White signing with AEW is a move that nobody saw coming. And why would anybody expect it? When you look at the big show situation on paper, it just seems so unlikely for him to leave the WWE, let alone work for one of its competitors. But I think that's the key phrase though, on the surface. I think when you look deeper and analyze the situation, while still surprising, it's a move that does make sense. Before I get into why I think that is though, I want to hand the video over to some of the people who agreed to collaborate on it with me. These are all people that produce different kinds of content, but the one thing they all have in common is that they all watch and love professional wrestling, as we all do, baby! I would give them all this grand introduction, but the thing is, is that I've recorded this part of the video like 15 times. The reason why I've done that is because I honestly cannot stop saying enough good things about all of their work. So to prevent this video being 10 minutes longer than it needs to be, I'm going to have to stop myself. But take that as an omission of how great their content is and that I'm trying to put them over here because they all produce really great stuff. And those people are Twitch streamers such as Greenish, Alan's Omega, one of the members of the up-and-coming band Anathema, De La Fox Checks, and last but certainly not least, because he has the biggest following out of everyone here, Cameron All One Word. Everyone that I just listed produces great content that you should definitely check out. Links in the description below where you can find them. But for now, let's sit back and listen to their thoughts and opinions on, on the big show, leaving a, yeah, uh, a company called WWE and Paul White signing with AEW. Huh, so the big show's in AEW now. I'd do the same if Vince made me wear a diaper. So when I first heard that big show went from WWE to AEW, I was shocked initially, right? I mean, he's been with WWE for such a long time that it kind of makes you wonder what exactly is going on there that made them, made them do the switch. But lately, 
I feel like it's not surprising at all because a lot of WWE people have been going to AEW for one reason or another. So, I, you know, I don't blame Big Show for moving to AEW. When I found out that the Big Show had switched from WWE to AEW, I was so shocked because that's a move that I never would have expected Big Show to make. I thought he was going to retire in WWE, but this just goes to show you how awesome AEW is that people that have been loyal to WWE are jumping over, which is crazy. Oh, Paul, you big rascal. One last turn right before the end of your career. I mean, in retrospect, it's kind of really cool that we're going to have him in an on-screen uh, commentator role and maybe even a physical role. But am I clamoring for a Big Show versus Sonny Kiss match? No, not really. When I first heard about Paul White joining AEW, I thought it was another one of those fan-made images that you've seen for every wrestler ever, but once I saw it was from an official AEW account, I was pretty shocked. I mean, it is kind of funny that all the people who were chanting please retire at the guy over the past few years are the same ones who are excited to see him in AEW now. But to be fair, I do have faith that they'll portray him in a fresh new way that'll make him more interesting than he's been in like a decade. So far, the guy seems genuinely happy to be there, and I've always thought that he was highly entertaining whenever he's just being himself and not following any kind of a script or anything like that. So all in all, I am looking forward to seeing what they do with him. I just hope that we see some kind of interaction with Marco Stunt on camera. I think Big Show and Marco Stunt having a match or a segment or anything on screen together would be great, especially now that a lot of people are anticipating it. All of them had great takes. Again, guys, thank you so much for agreeing to be part of this video. I think when you get all of their takes and put it together, it does paint this picture that while the move for the Big Show to leave WWE to AEW is still a surprising one, it wasn't completely implausible. And this is why I think it's a move that does make sense when you look at the bigger picture and you really dig into the situation. The first point I want to address is all of the people that the Big Show has worked with in WWE who all now work for AEW. Some people might say, oh, well, Big Show has friends in WWE. Why would he leave them? Well, I mean, he has friends in AEW too. Look at the people that he's worked with in the past who currently work in AEW. Like someone like a Chris Jericho who has revitalized their career going to an AEW and he's someone who's worked a lot with the Big Show. It wouldn't surprise me if those two were very close. Um, I mean, well, look at Cody Rhodes. Cody Rhodes has a position of power in AEW and, you know, him and Big Show worked a lot together in WWE. They worked a WrestleMania match together. It wouldn't surprise me if they had a good working relationship. Um, oh, well, look at Cody's dad, Dust Dusty Rhodes. Even the Big Show isn't really close with, with Cody. Um, I'm sure Big Show and Dusty Rhodes worked a lot together backstage. You know, there's probably a sense of loyalty there for Big Show to Dusty wanting to help out his, his son. And, you know, I'm sure that they were close as well. <laughs> um, Dean Ambrose? <laughs> Matt Hardy? <laughs> Matt Jackson? Wait, has Big Show ever hit his boss? Okay, uh, someone find Tony Khan and run? All jokes aside, though. If I can be serious for a minute. With the exception of Matt Jackson, as I don't think he was ever under contract with WWE, but all of the people that I've listed are people who the Big Show has worked with in WWE who now work for an AEW. And there's also someone who works for an AEW that Big Show has a lot of respect and admiration for. And I'm going to show you who that is by playing this clip from an interview that Chris Van Vliet did with The Big Show back in 2016. And if you're unaware who Chris Van Vliet is, he's one of the best podcasters and interviewers out there. And he does amazing interviews with the people involved in the wrestling business. Talents such as Bobby Lashley, John Moxley, Dolph Ziggler, Britt Baker, Thunder Rosa, Darby Allen, Dolph Ziggler, Booker T, JTG, EC3, Taya Valkyrie, Orange Cassidy, Dolph Ziggler, Sala Monster, John Morrison, Renee Paquette, The Miz, Cody Rhodes, Dolph Ziggler. Ziggler, the Young Bucks, Kurt Angle, Nick Aldis, Mickey James, Dolph Ziggler, John Cena, Kenny Omega, and many, many more. So please check him out when you can, and if you want a little taste of what his interviews are, then that's exactly what you're going to get here with this little clip from the interview that he did with Big Show back in 2016. But she basically asked the Big Show who his favorite wrestler is, and Big Show goes into detail how much he admires this person. And looking at the current landscape in wrestling, we know that currently this person works for AEW. 
Arn Anderson, and right. you said that if and most likely when you get inducted in the WWE Hall of Fame, Arn is going to be the guy. Without a doubt. I've, I've told Arn that for years. I said, if I make it to the Hall of Fame, you're going to do my commencement speech. And Arn, in his high-pitched southern voice, he goes, no, I'm not. I'm not going to say a damn thing nice about you. I'm going to talk about myself for 20 minutes and walk off stage. I'm not going to say, you can't make me say anything nice about you. That is a damn good Arn Anderson impression. Well, he is the man in the myth, the man to be with. What is your all-time favorite? That's right, Arn Anderson, somebody that Paul White thinks so highly of that he even wants him to induct him into the Hall of Fame. Though, given everything that's happened recently, I don't think it's going to be the WWE Hall of Fame anytime soon. At least there is the Wrestling Observer Hall of Fame. Um, I hear they recently inducted one of the greatest Canadian wrestlers of all time. Fictional Hall of Fames aside, the point here being is that there are a lot of people who work in AEW that Big Show is very familiar with. And when you factor in that guys like Chris Jericho, Matt Hardy, John, Don't Call Me Dean, Moxley all work for an AEW and are arguably doing their best work in their entire careers, especially character-wise. It's not to say that everything that they've ever done in WWE or anywhere else was bad, they certainly had their moments, especially at Chris Jericho. But more often than not, WWE did drop the ball with a lot of these guys and their characters. So it's not that hard to believe that an AEW would be a very attractive option for a Big Show, especially when you consider the way that Big Show's character has been portrayed. Because while you could argue that Big Show leaving WWE for AEW is an act of disloyalty, seeing as how he was there for so long, he was a multiple time world champion and a mainstream star there. You could also make the argument that WWE was never really loyal to the Big Show character because when you look at some of the creative decisions made with that character, the only consistency with the Big Show is a lack thereof. How many times have we seen the monstrous and or heroic babyface turn from the Big Show? Followed up with someone on commentary the next week saying, AND THE BIG SHOW IS LOOKING BETTER THAN EVER! At a certain point, you just see it so many times, it loses all meaning. How can there be any consistency with the Big Show character when one month he's teaming with guys like Rey Mysterio, John Cena, etc., and then the next month he's feuding with them and rinse and repeat for years? It becomes less and less significant and it just becomes more and more diminished. And then you look at all the humiliating things that this character has had to do, and I understand in wrestling, the heel needs to get his comeuppance. In wrestling, the babyface needs to look vulnerable, and that's fine as long as it fits the story being told, and it's a story worth telling. But, as someone mentioned before, THEY HAD THE GUY WEARING A F***ING DIAPER! WHAT WAS THE PURPOSE OF THAT? <laughs> what do you mean? It's such good pal. Now let's get the Big Show's thoughts on the WWE creative process because I'm going to read to you a quote from a 2017 episode of Talk is Jericho in which Big Show explains how he feels about WWE TV and the creator behind it. So please keep that in mind, this isn't from a recent interview that he did in the last month or two. This isn't from a recent episode of Talk is Jericho. This isn't from the Renee Paquette podcast that he did or Recessions recently. I'm going to listen to those when I'm done with this video, but Please keep in mind that the quote I am about to read to you is not him saying this about WWE after the fact. This is him commenting on the WWE creative process when he's still working there. I love the live events. I love the Friday, Saturday, Sunday live event shows. I hate TVs. TVs, I just want to bash myself in the head with a hammer because they're just long, useless, time-wasting, bullshit days where you sit around all day for some freaking idea that absolutely sucks. Debating it for hours, 17,000 inputs. And you know, one or two guys laced up a pair of wrestling boots in their life and know what they're talking about. And the other ones that never laced up a pair and really don't know shit, but for some reason they're telling you what to do. So you know, and you're just sitting there walking around baffled like, we all have that look at TV, we walk around baffled going, well, why are we doing this? Like, you know, I like the live events. It's not as crazy, there's not as much BS backstage. It's just, just me and the guys. I like that part. That's the part. And I like getting out there and working. Like, I've done a lot of stuff where I just go down, I knock somebody out, and I leave. I hate that. He does go on to say he understands why some of those creative choices are made, as he is getting older and it's the WWE trying to protect him from injury. But it's clear when hearing that the man is not a fan of the creative direction of his character, he's not a fan of the way his character is portrayed, and he just seems to just hate showing up for WWE TV. And I feel this is worth pointing out. WWE hasn't had any live event shows this past year due to the pandemic, a very understandable decision that in my opinion was the right decision. But I feel that this is worth pointing out because 
that means that the only shows that WWE does are the TV shows. They don't do any of the non-televised live event shows, which again, is the right decision. But if you're someone like The Big Show and you enjoy the live events and you haven't been able to do that and all they have you do is the TV shows, which you hate, it's not exactly far-fetched to believe that they wouldn't want to stick around, especially when you consider even before this pandemic, aside from a few matches on Raw in early 2019, WWE wasn't really using the Big Show for about a year. So even before this whole pandemic, Big Show wasn't really being put on those live event shows that he seems to really enjoy. So while yes, you could talk about loyalty, how much loyalty can someone have towards a brand that sat them down at home for a year before the pandemic and not really allowing them to do the part of the job that they enjoy and the only part of the job that they are allowed to do is the part that they hate the most because it's the most consistent with portraying him as a fool. If the option for creative control is present to you and you care that much about how your character is portrayed, then I think it's understandable why somebody would choose that over staying where they are. On the other side of that coin though, if someone's offering you a lot of money to stay where you are, well, some people might choose that over the creative control because at the end of the day, wrestling is a business, wrestling is a job. And uh, the idea behind the job is to make as much money as you can. And for some people, it doesn't matter if they're going to work and having fun or in wrestling's case, creative control over their character because they just want to work somewhere where they can make the most money that they can. And honestly, in wrestling's case, I think either or is understandable. I think if you want to work somewhere where you have a creative input on your character, then as long as you're able to put food on your table and your family's table, I think that's fine. On the flip note though, if someone wants to go work somewhere they have no interest in the creative control and they just want to make as much money as they can and they choose that instead, then I think that's also fine. Which all leads to my next point, which is the money. The money. Now, we don't know how much money AEW offered the Big Show. We don't know if AEW was offering Big Show more money than WWE. Now, if AEW was offering Big Show more money than WWE, well, if you look at it like this, if AEW is giving you creative control over your character and more money than WWE... But even if that's not the case, Big Show still left WWE for AEW. And I feel we've heard this story a lot over the years. How WWE were offer wrestlers so much money to sign or re-sign with them, and they still say no. What does that say about what it's like to work for WWE? Not to say that everybody who works there is miserable, but it does feel like these days the number of people who are unhappy outnumber those who are. Maybe those who are happy working for WWE, it's because it's their dream job, or their money they're being paid, or maybe they do feel creatively fulfilled there, or whatever the reason may be. But when you look at the people who leave and the reasons why, it paints this picture that a lot of people aren't really happy working for WWE. If you want proof of that, look at guys like Matt Hardy, John Moxley, and many, many others who've worked for WWE, or even people who currently work in WWE. They're offered a lot of money, but they still say no, and in some cases they still say yes and they immediately regret it. And those who say no, it's because of how miserable they are. Or at least, they aren't happy to be there. And a lot of people are at the point that the first chance they get to leave WWE, they do. And WWE might offer them a lot of money to resign, but they still say no. We're getting to the point where even during a global pandemic, where it's still hard to find work, there are people wanting to leave WWE and asking for their release. I want to clarify that those who were released back in April of 2020 wouldn't be under that umbrella, because while some of those people did ask for their release beforehand, WWE didn't give it to them and only gave them their release when this pandemic started, when they no longer wanted to leave, and it was much harder to find work then. So some of those people who were released back in April 2020, I will not classify under that same banner because yes, some of them did ask for their releases, but they had asked for their releases months beforehand. The whole situation on whether WWE should give people their release or not is a topic for another time. But the point of mentioning all of this is, is it really far-fetched that Big Show would leave WWE at a time where there are so many people who are unhappy there and they want to leave? And if you've listened to any of the things that Big Show said over the years, if you paid attention to the quote that I read earlier, you would know that Big Show is one of those people who is un upset being in WWE to a certain point. I'm sure there are some things that he's happy to do while he's there, but he is upset to a certain point and I understand why Chuck and Eddie would leave. I was one of those people because you, because you could say, oh, he has friends in WWE that he would never want to leave. He must be loyal to the WWE. 
and WWE would never let him leave. But again, he has friends in AEW. Someone he admires works there. AEW would give him creative with his character, and based off the portrayal of the Big Show character, you could argue that WWE was never really loyal to the Big Show character. And maybe AEW offered Paul White more money than WWE. But at the end of the day, whether those things play a factor or not, whether they are true or not, working for WWE seems more frustrating and disappointing than fulfilling. So should it really be shocking that anybody would leave WWE at this point? And I understand why it's shocking for the Big Show to leave, it's a very special case. I'm not saying that if someone like Randy Orton leaves WWE for AEW that we shouldn't be shocked. But based off a lot of the things that people say about working for WWE, it doesn't make a lot of sense for somebody like a Big Show to leave. But what do you all think? Do you agree that Big Show leaving WWE is something that always seemed plausible? Or do you think Paul White signing with AEW is still as surprising now as it was the day it was announced? Whatever your opinion on the subject matter is, please let me know in the comments down below. Any feedback is very much appreciated. I'll try to respond to as many people as I can. If you enjoyed the video, please give me a like, and even if you didn't, please feel free to dislike and comment down below any constructive criticism, because as I've said, any feedback is very crucial and important to me. And that includes for those who even enjoyed the video and would like to see anything in the future improved upon. And please share this video with your friends, your family, heck, even your pets if they'll listen to it. Please don't forget to check out Grunish, Alan's Omega, Della Fox Checks, Anathema, and Cameron, all one word. Links in the description below. I'll also be including links to the songs that I used in this video as well as a link to the Chris Van Vliet interview and please check him out as well. Thank you all so much for watching. Time is so valuable so the fact that you spent any of it watching this video means so much to me. Especially considering that this was a pretty long one compared to my other videos. So please subscribe so I can catch you down the road. Stay safe and thank you.